that. Stories of the Week is brought to you by Anapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at anapsis.com. And by Pony Express. Check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean and mean pen testing machine. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. And by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at BlackHillsInfoSec.com to request a quote today. What do you guys got? Four stories. I actually had a... I found another story on this. Wireless attacks against air cap... Tar- air ga- I, why can't I talk tonight wow must be the meds maybe too much or lack thereof my balance is drink to drink your medicine off. drink my medicine <laughs> wireless attacks against air gapped targets are possible it's another story what? about that yes did you we, you weren't here when we covered you were here when we covered that weren't you no this is another story about uh data transmitted via fm signals <laughs> We've talked about that a little bit. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that it was picked up by another news media yep. outlet. Yep. Yeah. Now, yeah. So, so something sort of com- completely unrelated. I saw something interesting. Uh, RTL SDR stuff, the, the software defined radio, the cheap one. Um, someone took a VCR and took the little you know, the thing that uh, the transmitter that does on channel three. So you can cook it to your TV via coax. They took that coax and wrapped it around the cable for the antenna coming out of the RTL SDR. Mm-hmm. And they were able to watch the video coming from the VCR out of that cable, just having them wrapped around. It wasn't very good quality, but it was th- the fact that that output, mm-hmm. that magnetic out, the, 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 the signal output on that cable was enough to bleed over into the antenna cable. Right. And they could listen to it, watch it. That was kind of neat. That's interesting. Did they strip the shielding off the cable? Mm-hmm. Didn't just even need to. Wrap it up and go. I suppose if you were to take like a coax and strip the shielding off it and just do the copper, they might have got a better, better signal. Yep. <coughs> oh, I, oh, I have a pet peeve. Did you read this article about bash light effects devices running BusyBox? I did. And I actually had that, yeah, num- my story number four, bash light. I barely got a chance to read it, but... Hold on. I want to uh, find a right. T- I want I want you to tell me what's wrong with this sentence. Maybe okay. I'm being. Is this the one? Maybe I'm old and curmudgeon from hanging out with Jack. Is this the one that came from Dark Reading, the article? Uh, maybe. This is from. Well. I don't want to. I don't want to bash the vendor, but. Th- I need to make a. So. I'm reading a. a, a it, well, it says busy box. It, this is correct. BusyBox is built on top of the Linux Linux kernel kernel. and used by small devices such as routers. That is correct. Yep. But they say that it the malware or or the uh, yeah malware scans the network for devices slash machines running on BusyBox. I don't. Maybe I'm being too like picky. Pedantic. Yeah, but BusyBox. You, you don't run on BusyBox. BusyBox well, run runs on, Linux. on, the, on yeah. the OS, which runs on the hardware. Right, right. You don't really run on BusyBox. No. What I couldn't SIDS? get over that. What? What about SIDS? Cisco IDS runs on... Sudden Infant Death Syndrome? No. Cisco IDS. What about Cisco IDS? Well, that uses BusyBox. It uses BusyBox. It uses BusyBox. You are Busy using Box. the term correctly, Chris. Yes. It does not run on BusyBox. It runs on a Linux kernel. Utilizing BusyBox Busy is software. It's so also GNU. Is a ker- so it's is so is the kernel. GNU or new software. Yeah, right. So BusyBox Busy Box essentially replaces your Unix utilities like PSLS, those types of things. In w- into one binary. Yes. 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 Into one binary. So but, you know how, but you can run example. you can run a system without BusyBox and still have a fully functioning Linux kernel. Right. It's so just the system's not terribly usable. You're without not Busy running. Box. So you know when you do ls dash dash help. Yeah. Right. And you get like eight, bi- like almost every letter of the alphabet you yep. can do as a parameter to ls. So what BusyBox does, it says well. On an embedded system, you probably only need 
60 percent of those options and it compiles ls especially for that and sticks it into one binary uh and I you basically see a sim link to busybox so you don't run on busybox Box. you run busybox on your embedded operating <laughs> system yes so yeah maybe I'm maybe jack's right I'm just maybe being an being asshole being is really you're being pedantic uh, yes you are being okay. pedantic but if you it depends on the where you're reading it so if you're reading this uh at the washington post yeah okay if you're reading it at ours, yeah, they probably know better. If you're reading it at a security vendor, they ought to know better. They ought to know better. And it was I mean, a it's, it, you are being pedantic, but, eh, you know, there's some people that should be helping. I couldn't get through the article. Yeah, I, was accuracy. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was stuck on that on one source, thing. Right? You know, yeah. I mean, if, you're, if you're reading this in the penny saver, uh, we're not looking for perfection. But, yeah, yeah, you know, which – so the next – so yours and my next webcasts and blog posts are going to be shredded by uh, pedantic people. Yeah, probably. Which we deserve ah, for we deserve. being p pedantic. They, well, you know what? Well, they always have They right. always have been, so nothing changed. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so what else? Um, Why? Okay. My first no, story. This I don't know if I'm just conspiracy-minded. So a local story, Brigham and Women's Hospital had to uh, notify patients of a potential privacy incident. But the story is that one of their doctors was the victim of an armed robbery. They took his laptop and forced him to give his password at gunpoint. Wow. Wow. And so, you know, they notified the close to 1,000, just under 1,000 people. You know, it di didn't have financial records. It had medical records. And being the conspiracy theorist, paranoid whatever um, that I am, I wondered who his patients were. And maybe that's just my approach, but, you know, hi hitting somebody at gunpoint and forcing them to give the password uh, struck me as being kind of extreme for a laptop theft. But, uh, you know, we'll probably never know the details. But still, however you, however you look at it, that's not very nice to hold up. Uh, hey, criminals are that thing. Yeah, that's, that's not very nice. Um, yeah. Carlos, I just message you the story on bypassing Emmett from offensive security. Are you at liberty to comment on that? Have you read that and digested it? Uh, no, I have not read it. Gotcha. Um, so All right, it, we'll give you a minute. Uh, a minute. It, 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 quick, what is wrong with me? Anyway. Yeah, Somebody, quickly on that one. So there were people whining about you know, Mike, I, you. I know that they missed it, but Microsoft made a, a real effort to make people understand you needed to move to 5.1 before you applied all the updates. And then there were people that were complaining, and I feel bad for them, and it could have been articulated better. But on the other hand, that meant they were blindly patching without paying any attention, which is dumb, which leads into my story number seven, which is uh, if you haven't seen, uh, MS-14066 was, was reissued this week because it broke. SQL 2008. It also broke some certs because of the way it uh, required rekeying if you were not careful with some um, TLS settings from another patch. So uh, 14066 has been re-released. Uh, if you had didn't have problems, I don't know if you need to reapply, but if you had issues or if you were holding off because you saw the train wreck, um, it's out there and, and do it. And as long as we're there, let's tee up Larry because I know you want to talk about the the other one, uh, 14068 was released out of band this week to address yep. uh, Kerberos vulnerabilities in use <laughs> in the wild, but they're not saying who. However, this is just uh, pure speculation. I know nothing. I'm going to channel my inner Sergeant Schultz. I know nothing. State Department turned off their email system. <laughs> and 14068 came out. I know nothing. <laughs> Um, yeah. And I just want to point out something before I hand it over to Larry, who actually knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't know about that. But. So we had this this SSL thing that started this year, and then people looked at other SSL and TLS stacks. And by the end of the year, every major SSL TLS stack has fallen over into a pathetic heap sobbing on the floor and been patched. Um I'm not predicting anything, but I'm predicting. What the? I'm predicting 
that if people are clever, they're going to take a really close look at how many other Kerberos implementations suck. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to, I don't know if it'll be as catastrophic <coughs> as what we've seen with SSL and TLS, but hey, you know, that's kind of the way things work, right? Is it fundamental protocol vulnerabilities or, or bugs are discovered? Yep. And then people say, holy crap, how could we have missed this for all these years? And then it turns out they're not the only ones who missed it for all these years. So, yep. Good thing Kerberos doesn't do anything important except authenticate us to everything that matters. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> not important. Yeah. yeah, so this was this is actually interesting and kind of timely um, because uh, Tim Medine uh, spoke at uh, the Sands Pentest Hackfest a couple of two days over yep. uh, end of last week, which is why I apologize. I missed you guys. I was there. Um, and he spoke on a whole bunch of uh, Kerberos type of attacks that he also spoke about at DerbyCon this year. <clears throat> and one of the attacks addressed with MS140068 about the ability to take an authenticated user and basically modify the ticket to be that of uh, elevated rights for domain admin was a very similar type of attack that Tim described uh, as part of his presentation. I don't know if at DerbyCon, but certainly at Pentest Hackfest. Um, and also is the similar basis for in which um, Mimikatz uh, allows us to create golden tickets, uh, f uh, golden Kerberos tickets for the domain. Um, but being able to take a regular user and turning it into domain admin by privilege escalation and improper checking of those of those Kerberos uh, tickets and dealing with TGT um, from from Tim was fascinating. It's very very similar type of type of attack that they're attending to address. And I, I wonder if I haven't Tim's looked at Kerberos in so long. I know it's oh it's they painful. talk about TGT <laughs> and PAC and KDCs and yeah yeah. So yeah you you missed it while you were Kerberos. Peeing. Um, Tim, and, Tim. The, and, and the main problem is that as long as Microsoft doesn't allow um, for a good way to rotate the password of the KDC uh, account, the, uh, the attack against the golden, uh, using the golden ticket technique to yep. create your own certificate will always be present. In addition, they still haven't fixed that. Uh, with its patch, so that's that's still uh, doable. Another one is that they still haven't fixed the problem with smart cards, uh, mm. where you have a bunch of users with smart cards. The problem is that their NTLM password never changes. The only thing you're doing is actually changing the certificate in the smart card. So once you're in, you're still able to kind of replay that credential as many times as you want, mm -hmm. uh, for as long as you want until they actually force a reset of that uh, account for the password for that account. And also, if you had somebody do a pen test, they were able to dump the hashes out of one of your domain controllers, and you're going, okay, let's apply the mitigation of resetting the KDC, KBR, GIT account. Um, you have to reset it twice, and then you have to reboot all of your hosts in your domain and have them all of them again go to the kdc and renegotiate new tickets well it's windows i mean so that should happen every <laughs> 10 minutes day, day or 10 minutes maybe yeah. less yeah the problem said the initial documentation from microsoft said yeah we rotate this password in x amount of days and it turned out they didn't uh, but it? at least with windows 10 they're uh in lockdown mode, they're switching to PKI and no more NTLM, and they're disassoci disassociating NTLM hashes from Kerberos, supposedly, yep. if you go to lockdown mode. So it's kind of optional, not mandatory, because once you go there, you break your integration with things like Linux and vSphere and using single sign-on with third parties and stuff like that. Yep. All right, you've got a lot of SD cards here. Yes, those are all SD cards that are one or more distributions for the Raspberry Pi. A lot of SD cards. Yes. And part of the reason why I brought that with me tonight, because I was going to see if I could get an opportunity to, to write it, is uh, I've got a Kali uh, SD card in here for the Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi. But Kali, this is actually one of my stories, so it's timely, nice segue. Um, the uh, Kali uh, released a version that has the uh, Raspberry Pi TFT support. 
So you can get a, um, a shield for the Raspberry Pi that is a very small, let me get this out of the case here, a small LCD screen. Whoops, I just dropped the SD card on the floor. Small LCD screen for your Raspberry Pi that's touchscreen as well. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had this here a couple weeks ago. That and, was the... Uh, and I was running Kismet on it. Somebody did an article on the TFT and a Raspberry Pi Pi. Yep, recently. It was on Adafruit, and uh, I think I brought this, and we talked about it a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I use mine for Kismet to be able to do war driving on a box that's like this that I can power off of this mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and with an alpha card. But now they have a version of Kali that you can actually use the LCD and the touchscreen on this device. So I thought that was, that was kind of neat, and I uh, was going to uh, try to get that put on an SD card. But just, you know. Did not have the opportunity to. So check that out for a neat little uh, pen test platform. Cool. Yep. Jack, I want to hear curmudgeonness. I, I want to hear any. I'm shiny and happy. Get, I, I don't believe, no one believes that no, so I, I for I'm a second. And happy. Uh, 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 just really quickly, if you've run into or anybody in the family or friends or whatever gets one of those Microsoft support calls. Uh, there's a link to where to report it in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Microsoft really does make an effort to take them out. The problem is it's a really good business model, so it is kind of whack-a-mole. Uh, you, know, you know what's kind of rant-worthy? Let's start with uh, my fourth story, Violet Blue's top ten security threats. Uh -huh. Getting an early start in the uh, year. I don't know. That's, oh. that's interesting. Predictions, yeah. Um, but the one that kind of winds me up a little bit is uh, the fifth one. Um, huh. like Fidel that. Salinas, um, evil hacker. I'm, I'm not saying he's a great guy. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about the guy or the story. I'm not saying he's a great guy. But, uh, you know, he, he got arrested and he got charged with a few counts. And then they bumped the number of counts up to like 14 or 16 felony counts. And. Then they came back and superseded again and charged him with 44 felony counts. This must be one evil dude. The or he was really good <laughs> at what he did. Or not good because he got caught. Um, Tor Eklund Ooh, took, it, uh, took his case pro bono, uh, had a little conversation, and uh, earlier this week he pled guilty to a single misdemeanor account. Everything else was withdrawn. <coughs> oh, wow. So that's a good lawyer. <laughs> uh, it's a good lawyer, or it's really bad law enforcement and prosecution. Um, mm -hmm. So either they failed to build the case properly, and somebody who's a really bad dude uh, just got away with bad stuff, or um, they wasted an enormous amount of time and resources. Um, on a fishing expedition and got called out on it. Um, neither one of them is not really a good um, is not really a good look. I mean, we have enough challenges uh, with uh, bad people doing criminal behavior, as I mentioned with the Microsoft support can scams, um, that uh, I would like them to focus uh, more carefully. And I don't know who dropped the ball there. I don't think we'll ever know. That's one of those you're not mm. going to know. But it's it's as I've said many times. Um, most of us know folks that are in law enforcement and, uh, you know, at the FBI and people who are trying to make the world a better place and trying to do their jobs and trying to uh, stop bad people. And I don't know where the ball got, I don't know where this got screwed up, but this just wasted a lot of time and money. Um, if the guy really didn't do all the stuff he was originally, he was, you know, these 44 counts, his life's screwed over pretty royally f because of a lack of competence. Uh, if he did it all, he got away with a bunch of horrible things. Um, it would, uh, computer crime is so sporadically... It, well, it also, so one thing to remember yeah. is many of these prosecutors, actually, the way that they advance their career is going through right. very high-profile cases. So many of them will what? actually try to build up the case to that level. Exactly. So if this was a case of... Um, I mean, this doesn't look like it was evidence spoilage or anything. This looks like uh, an overzealous prosecutor trying to build a career. I mean, that's just anecdotal. That's what it looks like from here. Uh, but as you said, that's certainly the way it works. And that's one of the challenges we've got with 
you know, with CFAA and, and a lot of other legislators, you know, just try to beat people senseless and, and score a big win so you can, you know, become a district attorney or attorney general or move up the food chain or whatever. And it's, um, it uh, isn't really the best way to, um, to do these things. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's government and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. The Freedom Act, as long as we're talking about government efficiency, the Freedom Act died um, this week. The uh, White House promises to revive NSA surveillance legislation during the next Congress uh, after the defeat of the Freedom Act. Freedom Act is supposed to reign in the NSA and other things. I'm not sure that... Um, uh, you know what I you know what I expect out of our government for the next two years? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. No. I'm not sure that I expect much. I expect some I expect some some stupidity. I expect some grandstanding. I expect um whatever political preferences you have, you will be provided with plenty of things to be irate about. Um but that's, you know, not new. Um it's just going to be, oh, look, gridlock, stalemate. Um, mm. And I, unfortunately, you know, there are issues that I think uh, need to be addressed. And no matter where you come down on any of them, these folks are there to do things and they're not. Um, whether it's CFAA that we care about in this industry or anything else. And meanwhile, poor schmucks. I think we can all agree that we can buy, uh, that companies can now buy boats. So they've modified the law so that will happen. So... We can agree that unless we Money actually get enough people behind it and to make their lives miserable and make them think I'm going to lose a lot of votes, they're not going to take any reasonable action. Yeah. Uh, wow, you're a cynical old... Oh, that's my role. Um, yeah. I wish I could argue with you, Carlos. So anyway... So any, you, wanna guys, you guys want to talk about something happy and shiny? Happy shiny. Let's go happy, happy shiny, shiny, Larry. Story number six. Butts. 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 So Dr. Neil Krawitz did a great analysis of, of uh, papers, uh, Kim Kardashian Oh, image. Kim Kardashian's butt yeah. images? So they, he did not uh, analyze the, n the nude ones, but he yeah, did the one of the, the champagne. champagne. Yeah, I see that now. And uh, you know, f fascinating f set of photographs that was supposed to, quote, break the internet. Yeah, it didn't do that. Um, but... Uh, the, the photography marketing the, it it's the, the, the yeah, worst or finest, finest I'm not sure way. which no, pretty good either way um, but still um, the image of the the champagne balanced yeah. um, is a composite of many images that was uh, altered even after the fact based on the analysis that Dr. Krawitz did um, <clears throat> I think it's an actual sort of fascinating thing in in the marketing as to, to how that image was put together and you know talks about enforcing body types and it, yeah shopped yeah, <laughs> uh, obviously yeah, can you imagine shopped. the poor doctor with his arm in the sling after doing all of that analysis <laughs> <laughs> uh, he only did the analysis of the fully clothed one because he does, and it's obviously photoshopped. That's, I mean, you can just tell that's from what looking he says. at it. It's yeah, but he tells you how it was. And yeah, how no, he goes into some really good analysis, analysis. of it. He always has, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and images. that was. I, I mean, and this is you know one of those things near and dear to my heart. You know, image analysis stuff, uh, as well as uh, I was very much in high school into the whole subliminal marketing type of stuff, and how they em edited images and the marketing behind the the look uh, and the layout of all that. Type you know, of stuff. if you want to see people in non photoshopped you have to pretty much at this point look at them in real life yep is kind of the way i look <coughs> at it now yep absolutely so anytime kim kardashian wants to come to the studio and pose naked for us <laughs> we'll be happy to compare to the photoshopped well, images photoshopped images <sighs> <laughs> just throwing that out i there. think that's the first time you'll see me in the studio <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, there was a major iOS flaw, which is interesting. No way. Larry, I added a story in there. Uh, reverse engineering. Yes. Uh, a Verisure wireless so, alarm. Yes, and I saw this, and this is really a fantastic. I, I put that in there just for you, my friend. Yeah, Can you radio all kinds yep. of 
Yeah, good stuff. Got this is a fan. Yeah, bodline uh, discovery of the modulation type. Uh, looking at GNU radio, recovering um, the s preamble and sync word. Um, fantastic. It was analysis great. Yeah. of ra yeah. of this radio. Yeah, and and quite honestly, most of the analysis in this case was done from the RF side mm -hmm. um, as opposed to looking at the, you know, grabbing flash RAM, any of that type of stuff, or um, de delving really deeply into the CC1110 uh, uh, chip. Now, there was a little bit of looking at the data, chip, data sheet for the CC1110, which is absolutely acceptable and, and makes a lot of sense. Uh, specifically taking a look at what modulation types the damn chip supports so that you potentially know which ways to, to go down uh, when you start doing some of the reversing. <coughs> Carlos, I had a story, in the, another story in there for you as well. I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw this one, Carlos. It revolves around res uh, protecting privileged domain accounts, restricting admin and protected users in a Windows domain. This was posted to the SANS Digital Forensics blog. Mike... Pinkleton uh, wrote the article and basically recommends people avoid interactive logins to untrusted hosts, disable delegation for privileged accounts, and enforce Kerberos network authentication. It goes into detail on how you can avoid interactive logins, normal RDP versus restricted admin RDP, um, and the last one was on the new protected users group. Uh, I thought it was a very thorough article. I won't pretend to understand all of the intimate details presented in there, but uh, I wanted to pass it off to Carlos for... In fact, that is a very good one because uh, if you set up your environment how he, the, the way he's describing, what you're actually achieving is that there's not going to be credentials in memory. So if an yeah. attacker is waiting on that server for a domain admin to actually log in into it so he can steal the domain admin credentials to then do lateral movement, mm -hmm. he won't be able because those credentials are not going to be stored in memory for him to abuse. He will have to force other ways of that admin actually exposing his NTLM credentials so they're stored in memory. Uh, in, in fact, this same technique can also be applied to PowerShell remoting, where you actually kind of uh, disable uh, what we call the second hop, where you go into a server and then you actually delegate your credentials to that server so you can hop to a, a, a third server. Um, if, if it applies the same, right now he's doing it here with uh, RDP. And yeah, I have to say, it's a very good move. It will prevent that type of attack of uh, Windows. Uh, uh, what happens is when you log in into this server and you're sending your NTLM credentials and you're not part of that de uh, delegated group, protected group, what happens is your credentials get cached in memory. So when you want to connect to a, any other server from that one, the only thing it has to do is take your NTLM hash that is in memory and just do kind of a capacity hash to the other server what you're actually forcing is that the uh, authentication is, does, is done via Kerberos. So what you're actually passing is your, uh, your Kerberos ticket over to that host and the KDC is validating you. So your credentials are never cached. So Mimikatz, Windows Credential Editor, all of those tools are rendered useless. Mm-hmm. Very nice. The problem is that many people don't like going the extra mile and enabling all of this stuff. Many times I see, um, and Jack probably have seen this in some of the mail lists that, that we're together, where people complain, Microsoft should be doing more to secure the environment. Well, Microsoft actually provides you the tools. It's that you don't take the time to learn the tools, or you don't take the time to read and learn how to secure your environment. And that's another problem we see with pen testers. Like uh, Ed Scode has mentioned very well in at DerbyCon in his uh, presentation, many times pen testers don't care about securing or don't care about how to secure the environment, and they're doing a service for their customers, not showing to them this is how you protect yourself. Uh, and knowing all of this. 
features that Microsoft has there, but you need to go in and enable them and actually configure them, even though they make make your life a bit more difficult. Uh, they pay themselves just by protecting you from that kind of attack, especially uh, lateral movement once your environment has been penetrated. Cool. Nice. So, Paul, I liked the, uh, the story you had about Dark Hotel. Yeah. Oh, I meant to... Yeah, this is from Wired magazine, yep. and uh, this is this is kind of interesting. So, basically, it looks like. Uh, well, I'll let you describe the story, and then I'll give my yeah, thoughts. Basically, they're they're specifically targeting hotels and specifically targeting people, getting on the hotel's Wi-Fi and uh, phishing people, or getting them to open a malicious uh, executable, <coughs> and mm-hmm. they're doing this at really high profile high price tag hotels hoping to get really high profile or, or high value locations high value targets essentially is what they're going after yep and the, they dubbed this group the dark hotel uh they say they've been active since 2007 uh they're doing this more and more hotels and then they get into a whole mm-hmm. bunch of other conspiracy yep they pinpoint it to South, South Korea. Korea. One of the things that I did not like about this article was it said, well, they're using a kernel mode uh, keylogger, and that means they're really lead. I'm like, okay, really? I'm like, if we set our minds to it, we could figure out how to use a kernel mode keylogger too, well, I'm assuming. We could do some Google yeah. searches and figure out how to yeah, do that. Yeah, I we Google that for you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't think that was a yeah, big so deal. And, and the so they said that was their whole reason that was like the thing that says – this is, is so they say this is a top class threat actor. Their ability to do kernel mode keylogger is rare. The reverse engineering of the certificate, the leveraging of zero days, puts them in a special category. I'm like, dude, that's just the hacker and the on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hello, that's, that's hacker. I can go buy a zero day exploit. I can get someone a uh, reverse insurance certificate. Uh, see, and I can use a kernel mode. Uh, I mean, not that I'm, I'm super lead, I but am, come on now. I am reading the first paragraph of this article, and it says the hotel guest probably never knew it hit him when he tried to get online using his five star hotel's Wi Fi network. He got a pop-up alerting him to a new Adobe software update. When he clicked to accept the download, he got a malicious executable instead. That says one tool to me. Evil grade. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, not, I, if I'm lead and I can do evil grade, then sweet, I'm lead. <laughs> I mean, it, it's uh, not, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're running your own zero days, do props to uh, you. Like all that's, right. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, respect, right? Yeah, absolutely. But, they don't know that. It's just so, so the, the take on this. And popcorn. I was, I was asked popcorn. about this one and gave some advice. A bunch of other people did for an uh, article last week. And it was, you know, those of us that travel a lot and pay attention to security and people have asked what that little box is you carry when you carry your own, you know, mm-hmm. little router thing mm-hmm. or your Wi-Fi firewall like I do. Or people like look at you type and 50 some odd characters into full mm-hmm. disk encryption before your laptop boots. Mm-hmm. And they're like. What the, it's, you know what, guess what, that's, that's why. we may be paranoid, but people are out to get you, right? Yeah. Everyone's it's like, well, why, why do you carry your own hotspot with you when you travel? Case in point. That's why. why. <laughs> Unless you go and stay at one of those Hiltons that was <laughs> doing was, grow gay pee containment. That's it was, right. It was the, right. That was just the one Gaylord in Nashville, you know? Yeah. It, yeah, and I mean, it's but like, my why? Have oh, you're talking about the hotel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got that AT&T hotspot, and yeah. it has external antenna connectors that yeah. I believe, and i got to research it more, are for the 4G, uh, those connectors, probably. not for the Wi-Fi. Right, probably. right. The, I, th- those, are, those are pretty sweet. They're, they're yeah. as many as there used to be. Um, I mean, it's it's like when I'm rum- rummaging, depending on where I am, uh, I USB tether. tether. You tether? USB tether. tether. Rather than hotspot, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If that's one, supported, it, sa- it saves on battery. Um, yeah, it, it's a. But I mean, you know, the, you need to think about stuff. And at the extreme, you need, you know, if your if your corporation, if your organization has real security risks, uh, maybe you need some. I I don't know, Chromebooks that you throw away when you get back. Uh, you know, there are folks that do that. Maybe maybe you just need to be provisioned with a machine. Um, you know, maybe if you're really sensitive, you, you know, there's a two-factor auth as long as you can get connectivity to whatever you need. If you're tied to SMS and you're somewhere where your phone doesn't work or you have to rely on, uh, you know, if you're doing SMS two-factor auth, that's kind of problematic. Uh, if you can't trust the, the carrier, which, you know, is, is any place like, oh, I don't know, here, 
um, which we talked about that story last week or the week before. But it's, uh, you know, think about what it is. Two-factor auth with a little, uh, little uh, you know, token from somebody or an app on your phone that, that does the two-factor auth stuff. You need to think about maybe having, uh, like I said, rotating laptops. Maybe you flatten them. Um, maybe you do a, a bunch of different things. Maybe you uh, don't want to carry your laptop everywhere, and so you have a, uh, a bootable operating system on an SD card, and the SD card at least stays in your pocket. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But you need to talk to somebody. You know, these executives need to talk to somebody and take it seriously and figure out what, what makes sense for them. Um, um, who gave a really good talk on this a couple of years ago? I'm blanking, I'm blanking. You set con. Um, it'll come to me like on the way home and I'll forget. But anyway, yes, there's some folks that... that Someone, someone's them. in the car right now screaming into their... Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe I'm, I'm blanking on this okay. name. But it'll... It, anyway, so... I, but I've seen a couple of these. And maybe you don't need um, full tilt, you know, burner phone, throw it away, and, uh, you know, separate email accounts set up and all of that. Um, but maybe you do. Um, mm. Maybe you ought to just be aware of it and not... Not click shit. You know, that, that's there's that. The, the, well, there's, but that's what the internet's about is click shit. But I mean, there's there's True. some stuff that's pretty straightforward. Uh, update your unless you're going long term. Update your shit before you go, mm -hmm. and don't accept any updates while you're on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> for your phone, your mobile devices yeah, right. included. You ought to disable that crap anyway when you're on the road because what's happening? You're trying to catch your email. You got eight minutes before the plane goes. You're standing there with your laptop out in line because your phone's dead, and you're trying to get on the airplane. And all you want is your email to sync, and all these other billion and, things, and eight hundred updates try to come down and slow your machine. For that reason alone, you should like disable mm -hmm. that and then manually check regularly if you're a road warrior. Um, but anyway, anyway, with that, we're going to take a short break. Come back and wrap up the show. Mm -hmm. And we're back to say goodbye. Goodbye. Shop.securityweekly.com. Look for a big update, maybe. And wake up, Maureen. My, my voices in my head tell me to say. Yes. Yes. The voices in my head. Wake up, Maureen! <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Larry, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks to our special guests mm. uh, who are on the show. Lars. Adrian and Brandon, we should we should wow. tell the people that like watch live that next week don't watch on Thursday night. Watch on Tuesday, next week. <laughs> Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday next Tuesday. week. Thursdays. I mean, you can Turkey watch day. Thursday night, but it'll be recorded. That's right. <laughs> it'll be Tuesday night show. <laughs> You'll miss the joy so of Larry, live. Why don't you take us out, my friend? Over and. I don't always say overnight, but when I do, it's on Paul Security Weekly. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, yeah. Nice hat. <laughs>